the next discussion that Jesus told his apostles about was really serious. You can't get any more serious than this. He talked about the Roman cross. He didn't say Rome, but they knew what he was talking about when he mentioned cross. That was the instrument that the Roman Empire, the Roman government used to take criminals and to put them to death on. It was really horrible. There's different versions of it. The cross went like this. Sometimes the cross was like this. They crucified him like that, where they spread their arms and their legs. Sometimes it was like a T, where their arms are up here. Sometimes it was just one stake and their arms came down up here and then the feet came on either side of the pole. It's really, really tough, but it was most of the time a cross. It was two wooden beams that crossed over. And uh, we see that a lot, actually. People wear crosses. Now, if the, I'll tell you right now, nobody, I believe, wore crosses in the first century when Jesus was alive on the earth as a human. Um, as you could tell, I have these crosses. I never wear them, but, you know, people have given to me or something, and um, bless their hearts. But see this, a golden cross? It was wood. It was a piece of wood. And, uh, and then kind of jewelry. I don't know if you can see this. But it actually says right there, can you read that? If you can't, then I'll just say what it says. Fashion jewelry. Fashion? <laughs> Fashionable? Now, I'm not criticizing anyone that might be wearing crosses. Many, millions of Christians have, over the years, worn crosses. And that can be a good thing in the sense that, you know, I'm, I'm showing you that I'm a Christian. But uh, in that day and age, I don't think any disciple would have worn it personally because it was really a horrible execution instrument. Oops, I can't get this off. Ah! How about this? Hey, how about this for fashion? Just kidding. Uh, you know, people uh, you know, wouldn't have worn these in that day because it was so horrible. Crosses were instruments of, uh, of like death, that I said. I was given, by the way, recently a, a wonderful gift from a child who's very precious, a cross that she made. And that was very special to me because of her love and all. And then there's all sorts of <laughs> things like this. I have more probably in my house. I know I have some things that give, people have given me on the wall that is very precious to me. But look at this, such a pretty glass figure of a cross. You know, and then there's this, I picked up this. Um, there's a, a, a plaque that's special. You know, it's very special, very precious. And then there's this, <laughs> I think I've shown this before. This one, like, you know, the dove, the spirit of God. And then this is probably more accurately, although this is looks like stone here. It says, blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, which is cool. And then that that's a cross. But really, it was what Jesus actually had to die on at that time as a criminal, or as a seemingly to be criminal. He never died. He, he never, died for his own crimes. It wasn't a punishment of him as a robber or a murderer, uh, but they put him on a cross that uh, literally took his life and Jesus died on a cross for us. The Bible says, curse is everyone that hangs on a tree. And Jesus was counted as curse for us that you might be blessed. But Jesus tells his disciples that unless you take up your cross, you can't follow me. Now, I don't think he really was saying that everybody's going to be dying on crosses. It didn't happen like that. But what he was saying is that you, as a follower of me, if you're going to follow me, um, then you need to absolutely be willing to die for anything uh, that is sinful against me. In other words, you're giving your total life to me. And that's what he meant. I've never died on a cross, yet I take up my cross all the time. Huh? sort of a paradox. If you didn't die on a cross, what does it mean by dying on a cross? Um, because um, it is taking sin and evil and, and, and you want it out of your life. It's like death to all of it. You want all the sinful acts that you do and any desires that do sin, all that is to be put on a cross. But he's also saying uh, you're taking up your cross. And by the way, uh, in, in that day, the criminal had to carry their own crosses to the hill or to the place that they're going to be crucified on. And by the way, hundreds, I don't know how many, but hundreds, maybe thousands of Christians were killed in Palestine, in the land of Israel. Um, so it wasn't just Jesus. but And so they ended up, some of these guys who he's talking to literally died on crosses later. They gave themselves up literally for him. 
But figuratively, like in a figure of speech, Jesus is saying, if you're going to follow me, if you want me, you've got to die on a cross. Die to your desires, what you want. In other words, you're serving him completely. No other rabbis were teaching that to their disciples. No other, I don't think any other religions have that type of commitment that Jesus demanded. And, uh, and if you don't do it, then you're not really worthy of him. Now, I'm not saying go kill yourself, child. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. You know, literally, okay, let me have some nails. Let me have a hammer. <laughs> you know, crucify yourself on a cross. No, not at all. But you are to be willing to do that. I am willing to die for Jesus. He died for me. But, um, you know, I live in a wonderful land that doesn't have that type of persecution. But there are Christians who die right now even kids who give their lives up for Jesus in other countries of the world. But he is saying every person must take up his cross, a personal cross. And that means anything that's going to be between you and me, let it be put to death. In a sense, die, you know, on a cross. So there are things in my life that I had to kill out of my life. I don't want this. I don't want this in my life. And so I literally, not literally, but in a sense, I literally put, you know, I'm saying literally again, I actually put everything on that cross. And Jesus died for all my sins, so I take everything and let it be put on his cross. And each person has their own personal cross that you have to carry. And sometimes it's suffering. Like uh, what, the, what they had to do is they had to walk the, uh, when they were carrying their cross on them. Like this cross, let's say this person is carrying his cross you know, towards uh, his crucifixion in between jeering and evil mocking crowds and it was embarrassing and humiliating. So you, what, you're, what Jesus is saying is you might have to go through some suffering. You will go through some suffering and persecution for me. And the apostles all went through that. But he warned them ahead of time, this is what's going to happen. But he also made it very clear and there was no compromise on this. He didn't say, well, maybe. He said, you need to be willing to take up your cross. You need to take up your cross. You need, you need to too, child. You don't have something physical that you have to carry, but you have to say, you know what? I'm willing to do anything for Jesus. Like it says in um, Revelation 14, it says, wherever this lamb goes, the lamb of God, Jesus, I will go wherever he wants me to go. I'll do whatever he wants me to do. See, you're saying no to yourself. Jesus later says it very clearly in, in Matthew, and he also says it, by the way, this passage, this same sort of passage is five times in the, in the Gospels. Five times in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that it says you must give up your life. And, and he goes on and says that whoever uh, uh, saves his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Huh? <laughs> well, I do a little picture here, and I hope this will kind of help uh, help you a little bit understand these deep things of Jesus. It's really cool. I think kids can understand this too. So listen carefully. If you don't get it, just I would replay this video again. Just kind of go through it and pause and think about what I'm trying to say. I'll try and make it easy. All right. So let's pretend this is God, you know, on his throne, his, his radiant, powerful glory and all in the presence of Jesus. There's two different people here. Here's a kid and here's a kid over here. Let's talk about this child right here. Jesus said, whoever will save his life or find his life in his happiness in the world. He didn't say in the world, but he says it elsewhere in the passages. Um, whoever will, um, how does it say it exactly? It says, uh, he that finds his life shall lose it. He that finds his life. The actual Greek is whoever has found his life. So this is talking about a person who is looking at the world around him and he's looking for his own happiness and find his life in the world. That means pleasures, amusements, power, money, you know, things that will satisfy you, things that you want for in your life on this earth. Okay, not the heavenly life, but the worldly life. Whoever does that, Jesus said, you're gonna lose it. You, you won't have life eternal. You won't have the wonderful heaven that he offers, and that is in the world, in the age to come. So in this age, in this world, you might find your life. You might have, have happiness, maybe. It's a relationship. You find someone you're so happy with, and that's good. That's not bad. Money is not bad. Things on the earth is not bad. It says if you're going after them and, and you want them for yourself and you're trying to find your own happiness in that and not in God, you're going to lose it. So it's wise, child, teenager, adult, to give your life to Jesus and die to yourself and give your life to him 
and then do what he wants and then you'll find life. That's what he goes on and says, whoever uh, loses his life, in other words, go through the cross, you take and you kind of die to everything that's important to you and you want to please him, will find it. This child or this adult or whoever it is came and he finds life. He finds eternal life. He finds eternal happiness. He finds eternal peace. He's in God. He gets heaven. This one doesn't. You go after the world, you're not going to go to heaven. You go after God and then the world's going to die and be crucified anyway. They're going to be, they're, they're going to lose everything. The Bible says the world passes away. The scripture says in First John, it says, love not the world. Don't love the world and the things that are in it. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all these things in the world. You know, they're not of the Father and you don't have the love of the Father in you. And then he says, the world passes away, but he that does the will of God abides forever. You'll live forever. So in simple terms, I'll see if I can make it simple. There's a sense, if you will, of bringing yourself to the cross. Okay. And the sense you say, Lord Jesus, I take my life and I put it, to, I give it to you and I put it down. And I take up my cross you know, I'm going to carry it now in the sense that I'm going to do whatever it takes to follow you and love you. That's a disciple. That's what's expected. So you take all your sins and everything about your desires and all, and you sort of like, in a sense, put it on a cross and you die to it. You want to live for Jesus and not for yourself. That's what he's saying. And if you do that, you'll gain life. You'll have it. You'll have eternal life. You'll have heaven and everything else. God will give you life. You give it to him, he gives it back to you. And only you have a, a wonderful life in Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? I hope so. I tried. But that's what Jesus said to his apostles. And now we're finishing up on this wonderful speech that he gave. I think that one was a big, like strong, wow word. Because remember, he just talked about putting you, uh, putting Jesus ahead of your family. He talks about, you know, family relations, daughters, daughter-in-laws, sons, brothers, you know, like, you know, you're going to th go through persecution and I, I, I've got to be first before them. Then he even goes deeper and he goes, not only to your family, but to your very own soul, your own very life needs to be given up for me if you're going to follow me. He's worth it. And this next time, we're going to talk about our last few verses in Matthew chapter 10. Hope you listen to that as well. God bless you.